All right, so we have spent a couple of days um, looking at the skeletal system. Hopefully you've started your project. Um, on the project, don't forget that you're going to want to add some sort of a picture or a GIF, um, something that shows me that you know a little bit about the skeletal system. Um, you are welcome to add more than one picture. Um, again, uh, today I added a new resource that lets you um, do some pretty funny things with Twitter and Facebook and things like that. You're welcome to use that as long as you're adding the correct kind of pictures. Um, and again, when you're talking about each system, you want to talk about the specific organs in that system. Um, the skeletal system's pretty easy. You know, bones. Um, I'm not making you memorize the different bones, but there are some very special bones that we talked about, like the skull. Um, we have the spine. We have the ribs. Um, I think those three are most definitely important to have in our video. Um, you want to talk about the function, like what does the system do? Um, and we know with the skeletal system, it was more than just, oh, I'm a bone and I protect things. They do a lot of different things for us. Um, and then lastly, and this may be something that you'll have to come back to, you're going to want to talk about how that particular system works with other systems. Now, we may touch on that. You may hear some things uh, in the video that we make today and tomorrow, a muscular system. But you probably want to come back at the end of this when we actually just spend an entire day talking about how they work together to make sure that you have enough of that information. Um, so again, today, now you, you can start your second portion of your project, hopefully, um, and you're taking notes on, and obviously this will be on the test, but it's the muscular system. Now, the muscular system is, is pretty interesting. Um, I think, without a doubt, I, I could probably ask just about anybody, and I think that you would have gotten this first portion correct. Um, muscles are how we move. Um, now, speaking of two systems working together, if it weren't for uh, the skeletal system, our movement would be a much different. Um, and so the muscles work with the skeleton or the skeletal system to help us move. Um, muscular systems are one of the ways that we live. All movement in the body is controlled by muscles. Um, again, as you can see the next sentence, some muscles, some muscles work with the skeletal system to help us move around. Other muscles, um, like our heart, move blood through our body. We have some smooth muscles in our body um, that help move food through our system. So all the muscles, um, one of their biggest functions, one of the biggest things that they do is they help us to move around. Another thing that we really don't think about with muscles, um, but we've all been outside on a very cold day and we didn't bring enough like a, enough jacket or we weren't wearing enough clothing when we went outside. Um, and we got cold enough that we started to shiver. Now, when you shiver, that's your body's reaction. Um, your brain tells your muscles to start shaking. And the reason why your brain tells your muscles to start shaking like that is your muscles generate heat. Now, we all know that because we've all been outside, we've all been running around, and even on a very cool day this year when we were outside on the playground running around, some of you even took your sweatshirts and jackets off because you were hot, um, and that's because your muscles generate heat, um, and then when we have those jackets and uh, sweatshirts and things on, um, those are going to be holding in that heat, and if we think back uh, to when we were talking about the way that heat moves, we would know that if we were wearing an insulator, a sweatshirt or a jacket, it's going to hold that heat in. And that's why we would get hot and have to take that off because it was actually getting kind of warm. Um, muscles, in conjunction with our skeletal system, help us stay upright. Muscles are what moves blood through our bodies. Muscles help us breathe. Muscles help us digest food from the chewing of the food to the swallowing of the food to the churning of the food in our stomach to the moving of the food through our digestive system and the intestines and even on the way out. Um, it's all controlled by muscles. Um, and again, if, if muscles generate heat, they help you regulate your body temperature. There are teeny tiny little muscles um, in your skin that will open up pores and close pores. Um, and the reason why that it does that is it lets either it want to sweat or it wants to like clench up very tight and not let anything out because it doesn't want you to get cold. Now, when your pores um, close up really tight, you might call it goosebumps. And we typically get that when we are colder. Um, and we want that to happen because that's one of the ways that we conserve heat. 
So it's it's pretty interesting um, when you're regulating your body temperature. Um, those muscles that cause goosebumps are actually attached to the base of the hairs in our arms. That's one of the reasons why the hairs stand up on our arms. Um, this also can happen um, when you get into one of those super scary situations, like a fight or flight kind of thing. Um, the hair, you might have has some, heard someone say like the hair stands up on the back of their neck when they got really scared of something. Um, and that's because that muscle is actually attached to the base of that hair. Um, teeny tiny muscle. But again, it, it it's one of those things that um, it's part of um, the way muscles move things in our body. Now, one thing that we need to think about, um, and I like to do this, and you're welcome to do this, um, you know, at, at your seat, wherever you are, if you're in your room or something, um, you know, raise your hand, put your hand down, stand up, walk around for a minute. And the thing about this is um, most of you um, do this voluntarily. Um, you, you, you have control over that. Um, some of us out there, Parker, um, your hand just tends to go up all the time um, for just no known reason. I'm just picking on you, Parker. Um, but we control these. And if we control it, it's called a voluntary muscle. Like we choose to do that. And it's very important. So if you look down here at this um, definition, voluntary muscles are the ones that you can control. Most of them, most of them move your bones around. If you want to run, walk, ride a bike, wave your arms around, um, eat your favorite foods, it's voluntary. You choose to do this, which is you are moving those, those parts on purpose. You're choosing to do that. So there are voluntary muscles um, in your muscular system. And I think that's very important to, to jot down. I would take some time on this slide, pause it if you have to, go back into the Nearpod with the code, and take a few minutes to get these notes down because understanding voluntary muscles is key to understanding the difference from the next set of muscles that we will talk about. So here's the thing. Um, this afternoon at lunch when you were eating, if you happened to be raising your hand, if you got up and were walking around the room, um, you were choosing to do that, but during all of that time, you were blinking and breathing, your heart was beating, your food was digesting, and you really, other than the breathing, which is a little different, but you really don't have control over that. Um, if you can't control it, it's called involuntary. Involuntary. So again, I've kind of I've put a new definition down here. Involuntary muscles is the kind that you don't control. It just does its thing, and it works without you having to think about it, which is kind of nice. I would not like to sit in class and have to think, okay, blink, okay, it's time to breathe, all right, got to digest food, okay, I've got to have my heart beating, because we wouldn't have time to pay attention to the other things that are very important. These are involuntary muscles. Um, probably, well, I don't say the most important, but it, it, is, it is extremely important and probably the most popular involuntary muscle is your heart, which keeps beating all day and all night. Um, there are involuntary muscles that help you digest your food as well, and we'll get to that um, probably a little bit in the muscular system, but most definitely, obviously, in the digestive system. So here's another thing. You can see that the muscular system pairs up with the heart, which is the cardiovascular system. The muscular system pairs up with the digestive system in moving food through your body. So there's a lot of ways that the muscular system works with other systems within the body. So remember when I said science doesn't make it very easy sometimes? Well, biology is most definitely one of those times. Um, so I would love to stop with voluntary and involuntary and just be done with it, but there's three types of muscles that are very important, um, and they are going to be labeled either voluntary or involuntary. Number one is skeletal muscles. Well, skeletal muscles are pretty much what you think they are. These are the muscles that are attached to our bones, and they help us move around. They cover our skeleton, and they move us. They are voluntary, right? I have the choice of when I stand up and sit down. Um, smooth muscles um, are going to be involuntary. They typically don't connect to bones, but they control organs. Um, your intestines, your stomach, your esophagus, all have smooth muscle around them that are causing them to move, and you really don't have to think about that. They are involuntary. Um, then there are things like cardiac muscles. That's your heart muscle. 
skin. This is a very special muscle that pumps our heart and moves blood through our body. It's also involuntary. I'm glad that I don't have to think about digestion. I don't have to think about my heart beating, and I can focus on other things uh, that are very important, like moving my hand to write notes right now. Um, Again, muscles are the main organs of the muscle system, of the muscular system. That's true. Um, you know, if you wanted some like better examples, well, the heart is huge. Smooth muscles are, are big. Skeletal muscles are very big. Um, this word right here, I know it's very weird looking. Um, I'll highlight it. That is the diaphragm. That's going to be the one that's right up under your lungs um, that flexes um, and relaxes, and it's what helps you breathe. Um, biceps, um, that's a specific skeletal muscles. Um, and so those are all very important. You can put all of those into your project. And again, I would be doing this project as you go along. I would not wait until the end because if you wait until the end, you're going to have a whole lot of work to do at the very end when you could watch these videos, which are only 15 minutes, and then go put all of your notes into your notebook. And that's maybe 30 minutes, 15 more minutes. It's 30 minutes, and it's been 15 minutes working on your project. Boom, you're done in a day. Um, and then you can move on the next day and, and finish anything up that you need to and put the little final, final touches on things, but it's pretty easy. Um, so let's continue to look at the muscular system. All right, everybody remembers um, our favorite um, anatomical person here, Parker. And today, instead of looking at the skeletal system, um, we're going to look a little bit closer at the muscular system, the muscular system. We're going to look at all the different things that the muscular system can do and talk a little bit about that. we got about three minutes to knock that out, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, again, um, one of the things that they do, especially if we're looking at our arm, all of these muscles in this arm are connected to bones. And what do they do? Well, they help us move. Okay, Thanks to those um, hinges and joints and those balls and sockets um, in our body, um, we are able to have movement with the skeletal system working in conjunction with um, our muscular system. Um, even in our legs, same thing, we have uh, the ability to move. You can even see how it's connected. See how it's connected to the bone? So the skeletal system and the muscular system really, really do work very, very hard together um, to help us to move. Again, muscles help generate heat for us. As we're moving around, they're going to generate heat. Now, I actually had to move out of the muscular system and go into um, the circulatory system to find this very important muscle. Now, I'm going to make um, Parker run. It's a little button. I think I can make her run. There we go. And I'll get her heart pumping a little faster there. Now this, you can see half the heart, and we'll get to the circulatory system. This is an extremely important muscle. If this muscle wasn't moving blood through our body, we would not be able to live. If our muscles that are attached to the skeleton didn't give us our posture and generate heat, we would not be able to live. So again, this the heart is a very, very, very important muscle. Um, but it's not the only one, so let's take a look at a couple more. So you're probably thinking, Mr. Bones, why in the world are we looking at the stomach? Well, um, as you can see in this area, these are two parts of a muscle that allow food in, and then they don't allow food back out unless you eat too much, and then you have to throw up, then they open up. But it keeps the food in your stomach. But I want you to take a look at the outside of the stomach. Look what it's lined with. All of this is lined with that smooth, involuntary muscle that we talked about. And that's important to know. So let's take a look at another thing. So as we get a little bit of a closer view of Parker here, I'm going to uh, feed her an apple and watch her eat. Now you can see those jaw muscles moving. That's thanks to muscles. Do you see how like this contracts on the way down? Uh, it's called peristalsis. And that is also thanks to smooth muscle moving the food down our esophagus, which is very important. So again, muscles are a very important part of the digestive system. Uh, let's take a look at one more very important muscle. You know, Mr. Bullens, why are we looking at what's very obviously the respiratory system? I'm looking at it because of this muscle that is contracting and expanding right here. That is called... Wow, I apologize. I got choked in the middle of talking. This muscle here is called the diaphragm. That's that really weirdly spelled word that we saw a couple slides back. And that diaphragm, by, by contracting and expanding, is what's helping our lungs push air out and it's allowing air back in. So these are all the very important things that we might see in the muscular system.